So what we're listening to here is the new Mercury piano by Waves Factory. Um, you can see on the screen this is a contact instrument. It's uh, designed for use in native instruments contact. It is a sampled based instrument and it is a very large library indeed. It is based on the original piano played by Freddie Mercury uh, as featured on the album Night at the Opera and also of course as featured on the track Bohemian Rhapsody so you'll be well aware of what that piano is supposed to sound like and this is Wave Factory's sample of it. Um, as I said, it's a very large library. It's many megabytes, sorry, many gigabytes in size. And this is the main snapshot loaded up into contact. And if you look very carefully at the top of the screen here, you'll see that this is loaded about 1.38 gigabytes. Uh, you can shave a little bit of that by changing the preload and sample size preload buffers within contact. Uh, this is streaming from an SSD on my machine, so I can reduce that by a little bit but um, it's still going to use up a fair bit of RAM when you need to use it. Uh, and of course the samples are far greater than that and stream uh, off your hard disk or SSD. Um, it has a very large GUI, you can see that in front of you. And this is the main uh, screen as the uh, uh, when the NKI file loads up. And you can see here is the piano and our crown and the microphone and gown. Um, and there's an inkling of stuff going on over the other side of the screen. I'll just show you what happens when you select on one of these buttons down the bottom. You've got the piano. You then click on mixer and a little animation takes place and takes you to this mixing console. You've got an effects console. And then finally you've got some settings that control the way that the instrument responds to you. Um, the mixer is based on the microphones that were used to record this piano. There is an ultra close microphone right up near the sounding board, a close microphone from the player's perspective, a mono microphone around the position of the player, a mid microphone, kind of a room microphone essentially, and then a far microphone. And these can be adjusted. You've got volume control of each of these and each of these volume controls can be learned uh, as all instrument uh, automation can be learned by right clicking and learning MIDI CC automation. So let's just turn off by clicking on these little red lights and you can see that just using the ultra close microphones we're down to 314 megabytes. The close microphones 310 megabytes, the mono microphones 161 because they're monophonic, mid 326 and far 298. So when you add them all up, that gets your 1.3 gigabytes. Underneath each of the microphone controls, you've got a width in the case of the ultra close and close because they are stereo mics, a pan for the mono mic and width for the mid and the far mics. And then you can do phase reversal and you can click on here and uh, switch the left and the right. So this one is for the phase reversal and this is for switching left and right. If you click on default, you can choose which output. So in this case, it's going out of the default output. So if you're doing a surround mix, you could set, for instance, the far mics to go through a separate stereo or uh, whatever output and send it to a, a mixing desk for surround mixing. So what does the ultra close, close, mono, mid and far mic sound like? Let's just give them all a similar gain. Leave the wits where they are and just have a listen to each of these. I'm not going to play anything too snazzy or fantastic. I'm just going to hit some basic notes, play some chords and melodies, and you can have a listen to each of these microphones. So this is the ultra close microphone. So that's a nice close sound. If we go to the close microphone,
So you can hear there, there's some sound of the room, but you've got that quite close sound to the piano. The mono mic is really quite fantastic for doing that kind of um, pop stuff <laughs> that we hear a lot of these days. So it's got quite a tinny sound to it, but when you add that to the ultra close or close mics, it gives you quite a good range of dynamics. The mid mic, as I said, is kind of a room mic. So if we turn the mid mic on and play some from that. You can hear that's actually quite a long way away. And then the far mics are a very long way away, so I'll turn them up a little bit. You can probably just about hear that in the background. So if we choose, for instance, the close, the ultra close, and the far mics, we can get a really generous piano sound. And that's the mics, so um, we're just going to uh, select those mics, give it a little bit of mono mic and maybe a bit of mid mic. So we've got a general mix of all of it. If you're not into mixing mics, you can just click on this little knob here from normal to position enhance. And as you slide your slider along the bottom here, it goes from being close to far. So you can slide it all the way to the left and get a really nice close mic'd piano. As you slide across the middle, and towards the far right, you can select where you are, which I think is a really clever idea, so you can leave that maybe somewhere near close and get a quite nice piano sound. The effects section is um, it's nice. Um, it's nice to have some effects. To be honest, I like having just a clean piano and then I add effects outside of the um, instrument. But you've got a compressor, equalizer, chorus, and these plate solid state valve. And you can choose some Metropolis plates there as well. So if I choose a uh, plate and have it as a... Turn it on. And you've got quite good control over the balance. The solid state plate or the valve plate. So those lovely ambient kind of piano sounds is quite nice. The compressor is quite harsh, but you can dial down the threshold and get quite a... And then what the ratio up. So that's quite a quite a nice compressor, and then the EQ is just an EQ, and the chorus just adds a little bit of um, phasing chorus depth. So if you're going for something from the '80s, you've got that lovely chorusy sound on the piano. So those are the basic effects, uh, quite useful to have around. I think the plate is particularly nice uh, in this one, and I, I, I can see myself using that. The compressor EQ and chorus I can live with or without. Um, 
it's nice to have them uh, if you don't have external uh, effectors. And then finally, the settings window uh, gives you an option about the round robin usage. Uh, you've got the classic, now commonly used, uh, neighbor borrowing to try and avoid that kind of shotgun effect of... Um repetitive notes like that. Uh, you've got a velocity curve that you can draw on here if you click on the little pen. Um, it would be nice if it was learning, if you could learn the velocity curve like a lot of the other piano libraries do. So if you play quietly it remembers that as being P and play really loud it remembers that as being MFOF and it will scale between the two. That would be quite nice. Um, but uh, maybe they'll add that in an update. Uh, you've then got an option to close, uh, have mid or fully open the lid. And this is a great little tonal control, so just play some gentle chords. That's with it open. Mid, and then closed. So I think we'll leave it open for the time being. And then you've got the noises. So you've probably been hearing a lot of little noises going on in the background here. There is a, a key hit noise, a key off noise, a key release noise. There's some resonance and there's some pedal noises. If I just turn the pedal right up here and then just... That's me pushing the pedal. So that's quite loud. We turn that down. If I turn the key on noise on and just hit a key very gently. You can hear some are louder than others, but this G here has a notable key sound. The key off. So you can get that lovely clunky sound. Yep, if you like that kind of thing. So let's turn that nice and down. What's quite nice about the key off actually while we're here is if you've got the sustain pedal pressed and you hold a chord and you release the chord, but keep the sustain pedal pressed down, you get the key off, but the note sustains. That's exactly, of course, how a real piano does it. Um, you don't get that on many libraries, so that's quite a nice little function. I quite like that. So let's leave that back where they were. And then you've got some timbre control, uh, velocity range, some low enhancing, so... A little bit excessive, the timbre just controls. It's a basic tone control. And the range controls the volume range, the velocity range over the uh, velocity curve. So that's quite nice to have. And you can change the offset of your samples to ridiculous or even more crazy. All right back to zero. We've got a very, very slight delay before you start the note, so let's put it back where that was as well. You can also change the tuning here if you want to, and you've got a editing button here where you can change the tuning of each note and octave individually. So that's quite a good complex load of settings. The final setting is this little chap here, which turns on and off the animation. So if you turn this chap off and go back to mixer, and then turn off mixer, it goes back to the piano with that turned on. It does a little animation. Um, it's quite a nice little thing to have an animation, but to be honest, turn it off and you've got quick access then to all the different settings. Um, the last thing that this has got, uh, which a lot of other pianos don't have, and I think it's a very clever way of doing it, um, is they've got this HQ or HQ option down there, right down the bottom here. You can just about see it. Now, if I click it on, nothing's really changed. The uh, Sample loading is still the same, 1.3 gig, turn off, still looks the same. But what that HQ is doing is it's using some clever filters and uh, contact synthesis to blend the different velocity layers 
I'm going to try and demonstrate that now just by using some of the close and ultra close mics to try and get rid of some of the um, the other noise. But if I just play a couple of notes, just a G and a G and a D, um, using as many velocity layers as I can get in normal mode. You probably noticed there that there was some just switching where it went from one note to the next and then up the velocity. So let's turn HQ on and I'll do the same thing again. So that's pretty good. You It kind of increases that dynamic range that you've got between those different velocity levels. Um, you might have noticed a few little clicks and pops and little glitches going on. Um, I'm, I've chosen a very bad time to do this review of this software. I'm actually doing a backup at the same time, so it's accessing my hard disk quite a lot in the background. So ignore those little pops. Trust me, this does not have any clicks and pops in it. It's a, a very clean piano sound indeed. So the HQ option does increase marginally the amount of CPU that your computer is using. So if I just go to the HQ off and just hammer away at some chords, uh, just... You'll notice that the CPU meter in contact maxed out at about 10 to 15 percent. The CPU meter in Cubase was running at about 10 percent, 5 percent as well. Um, so that's an indicator. If I turn the HQ on now, keep your eye on the CPU meter up here. you'll notice that the CPU meter is going up to the 20s and maybe even the 30s. So you see that putting the HQ on does use more CPU. Um, it doesn't use much more. I mean, that's using a, a, about twice as much according to contact. Um, I haven't really noticed my computer falling over, particularly with it in HQ mode or not HQ mode, but um, it does work incredibly well and I think it really does enhance the sound. So I think my recommendation would be record with HQ off, do all your track laying and then when you come to do your mix down at the end just stick it on again. Um, Cubase does a, an offline mixing and therefore it really makes no difference at all to the functionality so um, it's really really nice to have a play with that. Um, the, C the CPU use is very low it's a contact instrument so if you're looking for a piano which sounds pretty good like a piano and is playable and has a nice dynamic range and has some good thundering bass sections <laughs> and high sections. Something that I do quite like about the new version of Contact is these um, snapshots. So if I just go back to the basic version again, you can choose between some user and some factory stuff. So you can basically go through here and choose detuned pianos. You could quickly choose lid up, lid down versions. You can quickly find um, dark versions, just keys or pop piano. So the pop piano has a nice bit of compressor on it. Whereas if you click on something a bit more, uh, let's choose for sparkle. That's a very sparkly piano. So the presets are actually very good. Um, you could obviously then load a preset, go into the mixer, turn the animation off, have a look and see what they've done with it. They've done nothing really there. But I think in the effects, yeah, we've got a plate here and we've got an equalizer and a bit of chorus. So you could then tweak them to your heart's content. And then by clicking on the little save icon here, you can save your own snapshot or something else and it'll add it to the users snapshot list. So it's a really great little addition to contact. I think a lot of libraries are now using that snapshot mode and it makes life very, very simple. And you can share snapshots rather like presets um, with collaborators who are using this library as well. So that is Mercury Piano. I'm gonna be using this as my go-to piano for a while now, I think. 
it certainly has a, a really nice sound to it. It's not pure, it's not perfect. There are some little glitches, um, the odd strange note, and I think that's really nice to have that in a piano. Um, but the tuning is very good. It's been sampled very well. The dynamic range is huge, as you'd expect in a grand piano. So um, my recommendation is consider a new piano in, in your library. It certainly stands up against a lot of other libraries that are far more expensive than this one. So uh, there's a consideration.